live from Toronto School of Ministry. Welcome to those of you who are here, our visitors, our School of Ministry, and uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us online. My name is Sarah Jackson, and oh, I'm so delighted to be here tonight. I'm, we were just praying earlier and had such a sense of anticipation of what God wanted to do tonight. Um, for those of you who are watching us at home, uh, we have a chat room over here. Um, three of our wonderful people, uh, Judith and Megan and Bruna, are uh, in the chat room. So feel free to jump on in there if you have any prayer requests, any testimonies from previous weeks of what God's been doing in your life. Please get on in there and chat with our chatters because uh, we really want you to be involved in this evening. We've already been worshipping here. I'm like, oh, I can so feel the presence of God tonight. Anybody else in here? Yeah, a few of you. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm so hungry for his presence. I'm just like, it's crazy how you can just stand up here and just start to worship. And he comes. And he doesn't just come kind of far away, but he comes up close with his presence. And we really felt tonight that he wants to come and um, give each of us an encounter with him. I, uh, just a, a new and a, a deep, a first kind of love encounter. And so if you're at home, why don't you just stretch it out your hands if you're here and just say, yes, God. If you want it, say that. If you don't, feel free not to. But I don't know about you, but I really am saying, yes, yeah, I want to know you. I want to encounter you. I want to experience you in a deeper way. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Well, I'm just going to hand it over to Natanya and take us into worship. So over to you, Natanya.
is absolutely just a great time for you guys to just experience the presence of God right now. We had such a great, great, great time praying before this meeting and we got just some awesome stuff. Some of us, there was different ones of us in the room feeling the presence of God like it was the first time in the way we had felt God, the first time we ever felt his presence. And for all of us, it was in different ways. One person it was in their left arm, another person felt God somewhere else in a different way. And um, it's awesome for those of you here who have just felt God's presence before, just let yourself go back there. Bring yourself, let yourself go back to that memory. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to be back in that place when you first felt the presence of God, when you first felt God's love and experienced God's love. It's absolutely incredible. And I also bet that there's some of you here that had, could say, couldn't say that you've ever felt the presence of God before. And it's one of the most incredible things. It will absolutely revolutionize your, revolutionize your life and you will go back to that first time where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm feeling the presence of God. And it's so much fun. And I just invite you guys to keep engaging, just to keep engaging and just enjoying the presence of God. We can pray for people, but God just shows up. He'll touch you. You can feel him. Some people's hands warm up, different things like that. So just as you're worshiping, just keep going back there. Just keep enjoying God's presence, guys. Yeah, um, it's funny because we were talking about it in the meeting, and, and I was thinking back to when I first felt the presence of God, and I remember it was at a meeting, and I think I was probably about 14 years old, and I, I remember I was just, I was, I was lying on the floor, and and I had my eyes closed, and I thought someone came over and put a blanket over me. And I just remember feeling like, oh, that, that was so thoughtful of them. And I, I just lay there for a while. And then eventually I realized that that hadn't happened. But actually what I was feeling was the peace of God. And uh, just when Natanya, one of the prophetic songs she was singing was about feeling um, God's presence like a blanket. And I just laughed because I knew that was the Father talking to me and saying, hey, Sarah, remember that time? And it, it's such a tangible memory to me. And I, I love to feel the peace of God. And so I'm, if, if you really want to feel the presence of God tonight, and if you're at home and you're just like, yes, please, this is what I want. You know, we don't need to strive. Like, like Earl said, we don't need someone to come around and pray for you and lay hands on you for you to feel the presence of God. I was just lying there and I felt the peace of God come upon me like a blanket. And, you know, we, we talked about the different ways. Earl was telling me about the tingling he first felt um, when he was praying. He was like, I felt this tingling in my hand. And, and Kathy and Lizzie and each one of us was remembering that time. And, and so if, if you're like, I've never really experienced that, I just want to invite you just to kind of put your hands out. Not because that is any deep, you know, religiously significant thing, but just because it's kind of a, you know, sometimes we do with our bodies, we kind of make a physical action saying, I'm open, I'm up for this. And, um, and I just invite you maybe to put out your hands or just to, just to get comfortable and just say, Holy Spirit, please come. And if you're at home, just do exactly the same thing. Just put out your hands, get comfortable, sit down and just say, Holy Spirit, I want to experience you. And it may feel like a tingling in your body. It may, may feel like a peace just resting on you. It may feel like your hands on fire. Sometimes people feel burning. But let's just take a moment and wait for him.
some of you may have always had a desire to speak in tongues, but you've never been able to do it. Well, now is an incredible time just to say, Father, I want that gift. That, that, that's a gift to us. That's not, not something we can manufacture or something we can make hap- happen. It is purely a gift. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask for that gift right now, that gift that edifies, that gift that connects us with you. Come with your presence, Holy Spirit. And if if you've never spoken in tongues before, you can just just ask for that gift yourself. And just try. Just open your mouth and start speaking. Just, Father, give me a word. Give me one word. Give me two words. That's often how it begins. Just one word and two words. And and then you just keep going and keep going. Holy Spirit, we want to hear testimonies of the gift of tongues. Holy Spirit, we want to hear testimonies of of just how you're moving tonight how you're fulfilling that word that you gave us tonight you know carol arnott tells a story where she could just feel this just tiny tiny tingling in her in her hand and 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 she was about to just kind of get up and move on but she felt the holy spirit saying i want you to just just stay just just stay for another minute or two and and so she started asking him, is that you? Is that tingling just because I'm lying down funny or sitting funny on my chair? And, 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 or is it you? If it's you, give me a little bit more. So if you can feel anything at the moment, any kind of sensation in your body that you're like, is that me or is that the Holy Spirit? Just ask him, if it's you, Holy Spirit, give me a little bit more. Just a little bit more and a little bit more. And she actually lay on that ground in the end. I think it was for like two hours or something. And just bit by bit, the Holy Spirit just kept kind of moving up her body. And in the end, she could just feel this kind of tingling and just this this presence of the Holy Spirit all over her body. And she, she asked him, why didn't you just come right away and do that? And he said, I didn't come right away because I wanted to hang out with you. I just wanted to be with you. I wanted to spend some, some time with you. And that's it. The presence of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit just causes us to, to hang out a little bit longer. And so, Holy Spirit, we want to hang out with you. For a long, long time, Holy Spirit, we want to wake up to be hanging out with you in the morning and go to sleep to be hanging out with you at night. Is there anyone here who has something happening that they want to tell us about? This is where you have to be kind of brave. Anything that's happening that you want to tell us about? If you're on the chat room, please email into the chat if something's happening. Anyone out here? I'm pretty sure there's someone that something's happening. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes, you might just feel lots of emotion or some people break out in laughter. Holy Spirit can come in many different ways. Sometimes he comes in healing. That's one of the things we really prayed tonight, that that as God came with his presence, that he would come with healing, and, and that he would come with healing of the heart, but healing of the physical body as well. And so, Father, we welcome your healing tonight. Why don't we get some of those um, people that had words of knowledge about healing just to come up and and let's just pray some of those yeah as we were praying before we just kept getting the theme of of hope being restored and hope being restored and and in the midst of praying for that i just heard god say uh sciatic nerve and um i'm not really 
uh, too in touch with like medical information or anything like that, but I know it has to do with um, I believe a uh, like nervous system in, in your back, and it's really really painful. And, and I just felt God say, I just I want to not only just just bring healing, but really just restore hope um, to this person's relationship with me. That um, that it's just it's been so painful, and it's just it's been going on for so long that you might even be at this point where you're like, God, I don't even know. If you're real, I don't even know if you're if you're there for me. And I feel like God tonight is just saying, I'm here for you. Like, I'm, I'm here for you 100%. And uh, I really even feel like um, your name might be Cheryl. So I just I just want to pray for you. Just pray healing for you right now. And so, Dad, we just, uh, we just, we just release healing right now. We just tell that sciatic nerve to go back to the way that it was intended to be. And we just, we just take authority over all pain, all sickness. We just take authority over, over those nerves and over that, over that pain and inflammation. And we just speak just a healing touch from, from your Father right now. And we just even just speak to your, to your emotions and into the, to the way that you've just felt so hurt and you felt like, like there's nobody there for you and that you felt so alone. And we just. We just ask that you just you just be with them tonight. That you would just just wrap your arms around your child tonight, and just let them know, Dad, that there is hope to grasp, and there is hope that it, that is in reach, Dad. That you would just just be there for them tonight. Um, yeah, just before the meeting, um, God just showed me a picture of of people who were who were like hiking and going on a journey but they had like all this like massive amount of luggage and like big bags on their back that they were carrying and um, I just saw like God just wants to like take that away and and he's really just saying that's not your burden to carry that's not your responsibility and I never wanted it to be that way and so I just feel like if there's any anybody here that just feels like you just have this weight that you're carrying and it's just dragging you down and you just don't know what to do with it and you just want to give that over to God I just want to pray for you tonight is that anybody here okay I'll just pray anyways and it feeling like that just to, to um, either stand up or wave a hand and some of our ministry team want to come around and pray for you because there's, there's nothing with um, someone over here and a few people at the back yeah because there's nothing worse than when you're carrying just a, a heavy burden and a heavy load so father I ask right now that you would come to each one who's carrying a heavy weight and a heavy burden and Holy Spirit, I ask that you would lift off everything that they've been carrying. Father, every weight, every burden, Father, every false responsibility. Father, even for those who feel like words have been spoken over them. Father, would you just uh, lift off all those negative things that they've been carrying. Jesus, you said, Your, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And tonight we give you the heavy burdens and we ask for your light yoke, your easy burden. Wow. Yeah, for those of you watching online, just if there are any things that you know that you're carrying, I just want to encourage you, just, just give them to Jesus. Just like, Jesus, I give you my family. I feel like there's someone who's watching and maybe someone here who's just carrying a lot of kind of weight and responsibility for your family you're just feeling really knotted up inside and and i just i just want to encourage you right now to say jesus would you would you look after them i, I can't carry this burden anymore i give you all the stress i give you all the worry i give you all the insomnia and i ask you to be their savior i ask you to rescue them wow yeah thank you holy spirit Um, we we had um, Kimberly. You're online right now, and uh, Kimberly ha has um, MS, 
and last week she was prayed for on uh, CBN and uh, she, she's felt some slight improvement this week. So, oh my word, that's so incredible, Kimberly. We're really, really excited for you. And, and of course, she's felt a slight improvement. She's saying, I want some more of this. And, and so we want to stand together with you in prayer tonight, Kimberly, and say, yeah, we're joining our faith with you and believing for a 100% healing. Because you know what? If, if God can heal 10%, then he can heal 100% as well. So why don't we all just stand up and I want all of you guys in here to stretch your hand towards the camera so that Kimberly can feel like we are with you. There's a whole bunch of us in here tonight, Kimberly. And we want to stand with you in faith for your healing tonight. Wow. Jesus, I thank you that you are Kimberly's healer. I thank you so much for the improvement she's felt this week. And tonight, we join in faith as the body of Christ. And we join with you um, and declare healing to your body, Kimberly, in the name of Jesus. We speak to your body and we command you to come into kingdom alignment tonight. Father, we ask that you would pour whole healing over her body. She would fill you in every nerve, every fiber of her being. Holy Spirit, we, we just release that healing anointing to flood over Kimberly tonight. And Father, I ask that, that your hope and your life would begin to spring up in Kimberly. And Kimberly, the, um, the word I just feel for you is that God is weaving things back together, in not only physically but emotionally, that there are things that you felt that are broken in your life. And, it, and, 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 and I feel like the Father saying he is weaving those things back together and he's cutting off the stuff that has kind of died and there is just new life. I just see new life springing up all over you, Kimberly, and I, I, I feel, wow, this is a season of hope and springtime. Springtime has come for you. So we bless you and we stand with you for whole 100% healing tonight, Kimberly, in the name of Jesus. And I know it's a little bit cheesy, but why don't we all just shout amen as a kind of, we agree, okay? One, two, three. Amen. We agree. Ah, thank you, God. Well, welcome to those visitors who are here with us tonight. For those of you who are regular people, you may be a little surprised, like, whoa, where's everybody come from? And this is our new School of Ministry class here with us in Toronto. Uh, for those of you joining us on the internet, uh, we, we broadcast every week out of our School of Ministry. Um, and this is a five-month program um, that we run. It's a, a leadership training program for young adults. Um, so why doesn't everyone say hi to those people watching online? Oh, come on, guys. That was a little half-hearted. Hi. Okay, do it again. Do it again. Hi. Okay, that was a little more enthusiastic. They, they're a little more crazy. You know, I didn't want you to get the wrong impression. So these guys are here for five months. They're going to be here in Toronto for four months. And then the last month, they're going out on a missions trip. Um, and these guys are young adults from 18 to 35 who are just hungry for God, who are saying, yes, I want to get practical experience. I want to hear God's voice, get my heart healed, just go deeper and experience God in just deep new ways. And from from my experience over the last 12 years, I know that God is going to meet them really, really deeply. Uh, we have a real treat for everyone tonight. Um, we have Mark Verkler here from Communion with God Ministries, and uh, he is uh, going to be speaking on dream interpretation tonight, which um, is a subject that I'm really passionate about, so I'm very excited to hear Mark speaking tonight. So, Mark, would you like to come on up? Gordon, are you, uh, are you going to chat to you, or are you the... Oh. Let me hand the mic over to you, um, Mark, and I'm going to... Good evening. I'd like to ask you if you would uh, join me in prayer. Just, just would you lay your hand upon your heart and just pray this. Say this out loud. Out loud, dear Jesus, give me a hearing heart. Holy Spirit, grant revelation in my heart. Allow me to hear what the Spirit is saying. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I'd like to share with you tonight 
some revelation God gave me about 30 years ago when I was at the altar at the front of our church. I was, um, yeah, that's good. Thank you. I was praying, and I was asking God a very specific question. I was a young man in the ministry, and I wanted to do great things for God, and I'll bet everyone listening wants to do great things for God. Amen? And I was reading books of men who did great things for God. One was Paul Young E. Cho. He built a church of three quarters of a million people. <laughs> Would you say that's a lot? <laughs> and I said, how does a man build a church of three quarters of a million people? I mean, I had a church of a hundred. Could I build anything like that? Is that within my ability? And as I read his book, The Fourth Dimension, he said, here's how you do it. And he laid out a couple of specific steps. And I said, that's good. I think that sounds right. And then I went ahead and I was also reading Kenneth Hagin. And he built a network of, of faith churches that spanned the globe, hundreds of churches. And he says, if you need a miracle, here's what you should do. And he laid out two or three steps. And they were different from Paul Young Cho's steps. And I said, Lord, which is right? And I was at the altar saying, God, show me what I need to do to build great, do great things for you. And he showed me how these two men's messages fit together like a hand and a glove. And I want to share with you today what God shared with me. We have some PowerPoint that's going to lay it out. We have some handouts here for those who are here. And for those who are watching um, um, on television, you can get it from the PowerPoint and also by going to our website uh, later on, we'll give you an address where you can go and download this sheet. What God showed me is that there are five senses in our spirit that he wants to fill, and when we let him fill all five senses, he births a miracle out through our spirit. And we birth something from the spiritual realm out into the three-dimensional field. And uh, so we could call this uh, developing heart faith. We could call it the dream maker, because God's a dream maker. He gives us dreams. One of the prophetic words here tonight was hope. God wants to restore hope. But boy, one of the things that rip hope for me is when my dreams aren't fulfilled. What do I do when a dream takes longer to be fulfilled than I thought? I prayed for healing yesterday. I'm still not healed today. So now do, now do I move into hopelessness or despair, or do I hold that vision? Do I press in, becoming pregnant, and then releasing a miracle into my life? So this message tonight will teach you how to live in hope while you're waiting for God to do the miracle. The Bible says, if I can believe in my heart, I can cast a mountain into the sea. And I said, well, God, what is the difference between believing with my head and believing with my heart? I don't think I could define the difference. Well, I can define the difference tonight. I'm going to define for you what heart faith is. It is filling all five senses of your spirit with God, and when that is done, you can then release a miracle. So what are the five senses of our spirit that God wants to fill? Well, uh, the first, we have ears in our heart that can hear a rhema word from God. Jesus said, I only do those, those things which I hear the Father speaking. So the first sense of our heart is we want to open up the ears of our heart and say, God, give me a hearing heart. Let me hear what you want to say. Jesus only did what he heard the Father speaking. Well, what in the world does God, Jesus, God's voice sound like? I asked people for years, what does the voice sound like? No one can tell me. I'm going to tell you really simply in one sentence. God's voice sounds like spontaneous thoughts that light upon your mind when your eyes are fixed on Jesus. Man, I wish someone could have said a sentence like that to me. I spent 10 years trying to be able to say that sentence. I'd like you to practice it with me. Say this, God's voice sounds like, God's voice sounds like spontaneous, thoughts spontaneous thoughts that light upon my mind, light upon my mind while, my while my eyes are fixed on Jesus. Very simple definition. Something we can all do. We all can fix our eyes upon Jesus. He's Emmanuel, God with me, which means he's standing right here next to me. Whenever two or three are gathered together, he's our midst, which means he's right there. So these are all things that we can picture, and, we, and that's called godly imagination. When you picture things the Bible says are true, I believe in godly imagination. God says, hide the word of God in the imagination of your heart. So I believe I should take the eyes of my heart, and I should fill them with pictures from the word of God, and I should do more than that. I should say, Holy Spirit, do you want to take these pictures over and turn it from a godly imagination into a, a divine vision? And so I, I release the picture to God, and the Holy Spirit takes it over, it comes alive, and things begin to happen. Which brings us to the second sense of our spirit. The second sense of my spirit is the eyes of my heart. If you look in the Bible, you find that people all saw vision. Prophets saw vision, Jesus saw vision, John saw vision. 
Here's what Jesus said, I only do those things which I see the Father doing, which means he's taking the eyes of his heart, looking in the spirit realm, seeing what God is doing. What do I see? When I was here last year, I had a throat problem. I lost my voice in the middle of these eight and a half hour seminars I did. I did them every weekend for 13 out of 16 weeks. And, thir- and, and every single one of those 13 weeks, I lost my voice before the eight hour seminar was over. Now what, so what do I see? Do I see that I have a throat problem? Do I see a damaged throat? Or do I say, God, give me a vision of how you see my throat? I said, God, give me a vision of how you see my throat. And he showed me a vision. Now a vision, let me define that. A spontaneous picture that lights up on your mind while your eyes are fixed on Jesus. I think we might just well say that together too. <laughs> say that after me if you will. A vision is a spontaneous picture that lights up on my, my mind while my eyes are fixed on Jesus. Well, that's really simple. So I said, God, do you want to give me a vision of how you see my throat? Because I see it as damaged. And he said, yeah. And I saw a picture light up on my mind of his light flowing down through my throat, driving out all darkness. So I can see that. I, and I can say that. And I can believe for that, see it, and speak it. And if I do, then I get to birth it. And so that's what I saw. I'd, lay to bed, I'd, I'd go to bed at night, and I would see his healing power, his light going into my throat, driving out all darkness. And I fell asleep seeing that every night for three months. <laughs> now, hopelessness could enter because it could say, you know what? You've been seeing this now for f- four weeks, six weeks, eight, eight weeks. Nothing's happening. Well, how long do you hold the vision? You hold the vision until the miracle appears. That's how long you hold it. You say, well, yeah, well, what if I die? Well, you know what? In the Bible, some people died in faith, believing that what God had said he was going to do. As a matter of fact, I asked God that question. I said, God, how about if I I'm confessing and believing and seeing what you say, and it doesn't happen till I die. Seems to me like my cynics at my funeral will be all be having a heyday laughing, saying he thought he was so great, and look, he never got what he was believing for. I said, God, I'll look like a fool. And even though I'll be dead in my casket, I'll still be embarrassed. And the Lord said, Mark, you won't be a fool. He said, if you die believing and confessing what I've told you to believe and confess, and it hasn't happened yet, you know what I'll do? I'll put you in Hebrews chapter 11 as a hero in faith. Because how many of those people in Hebrews chapter 11, they died in faith, believing that what God had said was going to happen, even though it didn't happen in their lifetime. Amen? I said, wow, hero in faith. (laughs) I said, that's a better picture than fool. So I replaced my picture that I would be a fool with a picture that I would be a hero in faith. And man, the pictures you hold make a lot of difference as to how you live your life. Now, I'd rather not die in faith. I'd rather have miracles happen within two to three seconds of the time that God tells me it's going to happen. That's my preference. And I explained that to God in case he missed the significance, you know, of how important time is to me. And um, God said, well, he said, whose life is it? Yours or mine? I said, well, you know, philosophically it's yours, but in reality, I'd like it to happen now. He said, Mark... In the fullness of time, I'll bring forth the miracle. And now we get a chance to say, yes, Lord, or wine. Let's practice, yes, Lord. (laughs) Yes, Lord. (laughs) Because whining isn't all that productive. All right, so the second sense of my spirit, eyes of my heart. Jesus did those things he saw the Father doing. Now, when God has given you an idea and a picture, conception has taken place. A seed, a divine seed has been placed into your spirit which you could incubate, become very large, very pregnant with, and you could birth that divine miracle. So the first two senses allow the seed to be planted. The next three, and the first two senses are what Paul Young Cho emphasized. He said, if you've got a need, you get a rhema word from God, you get a vision from God. That that was his emphasis. That's what he said to do. Now Kenneth Hagin picks it up, and the next three senses of your spirit is what Kenneth Hagin talks about. He says, you've got a need, you want to get a scripture verse, you want to ponder it, speak it, act it, and you can release a miracle. Ponder, speak, and act. That's the next three senses. Okay, ponder. That involves the third sense of my spirit, which is my ability uh, to, to think in my heart. It says, Mary pondered these things in her heart. The things were the rhema words that the uh, angel had spoken to her. So Mary, in her heart, mulled it over. It's called biblical meditation. It's called pondering. It's deeper than thinking. All right, so uh, that's the third sense of my spirit. I take the rhema word and vision of God and I turn it over and over. I ponder it, I ponder it. Now the next sense of my spirit 
is my uh, inner will, all right, which moves me to action. I don't know if I should be checking my notes or just doing this all from memory, but I'd really hate to get one of them wrong. So uh, inner will. Inner will where you make a decision. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Paul purposed in his spirit, spirit, to go to Jerusalem. He made a decision on the level of his spirit. He set the will of his spirit to go to Jerusalem. And Agabus said, if you go to Jerusalem, they're going to tie you up. And he tied him up with his gir girdle to sh demonstrate it. Paul said, I've purposed in my spirit. I have made a decision on the level of my spirit, and it is called a conviction, and I don't care what it costs me, I'm doing this. I don't care what it costs me, I'm going to confess my throat is healed regardless of what shows up tomorrow or today or the next day. It's my conviction that by his stripes I'm healed, I'm going to speak it, I'm going to live it, and if I die saying it, I'm still going to do it. That's a decision on the level of your spirit, which is dif different than a decision on the level of your soul. A decision on the level of your soul is where you say, I have a preference. I prefer pizza Sunday night for dinner. But it's not a conviction. I'm not going to die for it. All right? So that's a decision on the level of soul versus a decision on the level of your spirit. Paul purposed in his spirit to go to Jerusalem. All right? And, um, and, he's, and he spoke it forth. All right? He says, I have purposed. So now we're down back to Kenneth Hagin. He said, ponder it, speak it. Now we're at speak it. And finally, he says, act it. Action. All right? Well, action is a result of the fifth sense of your spirit being filled by God. Fifth sense of your spirit is the deep, is the emotions, deep emotions within you that move you to action. I didn't even know I had emotions in my spirit because I was taught error. I was taught emotions were soulish and not part of my spirit, so I cut all my emotions off so I could be spiritual. And uh, when the Lord finally began to talk to me and I began to hear his voice, which, which happened about 30 years ago, he spoke to me and told me that emotions were part of my spirit and he wanted to fill them with his own emotions, things like love, joy, and peace, which are fruits of the what? Holy Spirit, all right, which is, joy, uh, which is joined to our spirit. So those are divine emotions. Jesus, moved by compassion, that's an emotion, healed. I said, huh, emotion leading you in ministry? You're supposed to cut off emotion, they're unreliable, and Jesus is allowing emotion to lead him in ministry? I wonder if his view of emotion is wrong or if mine is, because I've been cutting mine all off, and he's allowing his to lead him. Do we have emotions in our spirit? God sent Ezekiel embittered in the rage of his spirit. Embittered in the rage of his spirit. That's rage in his spirit. That's an emotion in his spirit. All right? And, he was, and that thrust him into ministry. I didn't even know I had emotions in my spirit. But when I looked up every verse in the Bible on spirit and heart, I found a whole bunch of emotions in my spirit and heart. So I decided that what I'd been taught in the past, I was going to set aside, and I was going to say emotions are part of who I am as a spiritual man. I will allow God to fill my emotions with his emotion. I'll have divine passion. Because how many of you know when you feel deeply passionate about something, it moves you to action? And until I feel passionate, I probably won't do it. I'll say, oh, it's a nice idea. I like it. But I'm not moved to action. But when I feel deeply, I'm moved to action. And that's now we're back to Kenneth Hagin. Ponder it, speak it, and act it. Well, I'll act it when I feel, have a passion about it, and I'll have a passion about it when my emotions get involved, and my emotions will get involved when I believe in them and when I understand a few things about them. One is that emotions are byproducts of pictures. The picture I hold produces an emotional response. Man, I like knowing stuff like that because that means I can guide my emotional responses and they don't control me anymore. Because the picture I hold is Jesus standing next to me, ministering alongside of me, and how many know that produces some pretty nice emotions? And if I don't see Jesus here and I see fate or Satan or the Antichrist, that produces some pretty negative emotions. But at least I know how to guide my emotional life because I know how to choose the proper pictures. Okay, five senses of my spirit. Five senses of my spirit, God wants to fill them. Satan wants to fill them. If God fills them, I birth a miracle. If Satan fills them, I birth a bunch of pain and misery. Now, we're all using these five senses all the time. There's no such thing as not using them. For example, let's run through the cycle twice. Your boss uh, comes up, shows up at work, and he says, you know what, we have an opening, a new position in the company, and we want to offer it to you. It's an advancement, and, uh, but we feel you can do it. Ha. 
Okay, I'm ready for spontaneous thoughts and spontaneous pictures to light. Let's, uh, let's start with a, let's do it wrong first, then we'll do it right second. How about this for a spontaneous thought? I have not been trained to do that. I didn't go to college, I have no practice, I don't think I can do it. How about a spontaneous picture to add it to it? I can just see what's going to happen. I'll go try the job, I'll fall flat in my face, I'll make a fool out of myself, everyone will laugh at me. I have now filled the first two senses of my spirit. Idea, spontaneous idea, spontaneous picture. Now we're going to fill the third sense. We're going to ponder it. All the way, I'm driving all the way home, and while I'm driving home, I'm pondering that idea that I'm going to fail, and that picture, I'm going to fall flat in my face. All right, and now we're going to get the fourth sense of our spirit involved, um, our inner will, will, where we're going to speak it forth. And I'm going to say to my spouse, you know what? I was offered an advancement today, but I've not been trained. I don't believe I can do it. I believe I'm going to turn it down. Now my mouth is involved, and now I'm going to be moved to action. I'm going to go back the next morning and say to my boss, thank you. However, I've decided not to take the job. I have just filled all five senses of my spirit with demonic negatives. And I have birthed the kingdom of darkness out through my spirit rather than the kingdom of light. And boy, when I discovered that, I said, I will never do that again. I will never take the creative capacity of my spirit and birth the kingdom of darkness. Never. My spirit was given to me to birth the kingdom of God. Let's run the cycle a second time. Your boss says, you know what? We have a, 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 new, a new position we want to offer it to you. And you say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And a spontaneous thought lights upon your mind saying, I have gifted you, I have called you, I have anointed you, and you will succeed. And I think, ooh, nice idea. I said, Lord, got a picture to go with that? Spontaneous picture lights upon your mind of his hand upon your hand, anointing your hand, his mind upon your mind, anointing your mind, giving you the mind of Christ. You speak in the oracles of God and you operating in the anointing in a supernatural anointing beyond your natural ability. And I said, nice picture. <laughs> I like it. All the way home, driving home, I ponder that idea and that picture. And then I speak it to my wife. I said, you know what? I was offered an advancement today, and I really felt the Lord was saying he would go with me, he's equipped me, he's anointed me, and I can do it. And I go back the next morning and I say to my boss, thank you very much, I'm taking the job. What have I just birthed in the five senses of my spirit? Kingdom of God or kingdom of darkness? Kingdom of God. I took the creative capacity of my spirit and I birthed light, not darkness. You look in the Bible, you see people doing it wrong as well as right. God said to Moses, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you lead two million people. And Moses had a spontaneous thought, I can't talk. He had a picture, I can't talk. He said, I can't talk. He spoke it. He believed he couldn't talk. And God got angry with him and said, you know what, fine. I'll give you Aaron. But you just missed the miracle because I could have done the supernatural by the anointing of my spirit, I could have made you a good communicator if you would have believed it and said, yes, Lord, rather than I can't. <laughs> I think we should practice, yes, Lord. Will you practice with me? Yes, Lord. God isn't asking me to tell him what I can't do. He knows I can't do anything that's supernatural in Christianity. He didn't ask me to do it with my natural ability. He asked me to do it with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm never, and you and I are never to look at our natural ability because that's not what Christianity is about. It's about the anointing flowing through you. Because how many know God's plan for your life is about a hundred times or a thousand times bigger than your plan for your life? And if you look at your natural ability, you will say no to God and you will never birth miracles. I learned 30 years ago to skip my natural ability and say yes to God. And I've been able to outperform myself for 30 years and perform much better than I ever could have in the natural. All right, so we've ran, we've ran the five senses through both ways. Now, Abraham is called the father of faith. And we're talking about faith, all right? We're talking about heart faith. I believe that when God calls somebody the father of something, what that means is that every key element that I would need to model in my own life to also be a child of faith is modeled in Abraham. And so let's take a look at Abraham's life and watch God fill all five senses of his spirit one after the other. All five senses of his spirit. All right, so if you've got your Bibles with you, you can turn to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Genesis 12, 1. This is where Abraham begins his faith walk. 
Every key element that you would need in your life to be a child of faith is modeled in the Father of faith. Say, it's modeled in the Father of faith. Okay. So where does faith begin for Abram? Chapter 12, verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abram, So faith begins where? Shout it out if you know. Yeah, the Lord's speaking a rhema word into your heart. That's where faith begins. That's where it began for Abram. God spoke to him. So I say, God, what do you want to say? I tune to spontaneous thoughts, which is his voice. And um, we teach 10 hours on his voice. And we'll give you a website address before we're done where you can go get a 10-hour webinar on how to hear God's voice and see vision. I'm giving you the one-sentence mini version, but we have a 10-hour expansion if you want it. All right? The Lord said to Abram, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land I'm going to show you. I'm going to make you a great nation. Say great nation. I'm going to bless you. Say bless you. And I'm going to make your name great and you're going to be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. The one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. If you think that's a nice journal entry to get, would you say amen? Amen. Man, how, how am I going to respond to that? I'm journaling someday and God says, I'm going to bless the whole world through your seed. What do you think would be a nice response to that? (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I receive it. That would be a very nice response. And some of us will respond that way, but some of us will say, I rebuke that demon of pride. Get away from me now, you know, because that's just arrogance. Well, no, it's not just arrogance. If it's what God's going to do through you, it's not arrogance. It's saying, yes, Lord. If you think you're going to do it through your natural ability, then it's pride. But if you understand you do it through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's not pride at all. It is meekness. It's the power of God flowing through you. All right? So we've got the first sense of Abram's spirit filled. God has spoken a rhema word. The ears of his heart have been filled with God. Now how about the eyes of his heart? Let's watch God fill the second sense of his spirit. Will you go to Genesis chapter 15? Genesis 15. Genesis 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram. How? In a vision. Say vision. And now while he's in this vision, go down to verse 5 and let's watch what happens. Okay, now, so God's going to fill the second sense. He's going to fill the eyes of his heart. Give him a picture. We say a picture is worth a thousand words. Pictures are extremely powerful because I think pictures are the language of the heart. When you look up the word imagination in the Bible, every time it shows up, it's imagination of the heart. So if I'm looking for heart faculties according to Scripture, one of them is the ability to see. Pictures. All right, so chapter, verse 5. Chapter 12, verse 5, Then he, which is God, took him, which is Abram, outside and said, Now look towards the heavens and count the stars, if you're able to count them. He said, So shall your descendants be. Then he believed in the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. My question to you is, what is God giving to Abram in verse 5? Shout it out if you know. A vision. And what does a vision produce according to verse 6? Faith. Say faith. Faith. Say, then he believed. He believed believed as a result of God giving him a divine picture. So if you need heart faith, you need two things from God. What's the first thing you need? A rhema word. And the second thing you need is a picture or a vision. And when you have those two things, conception's taken place, and you're ready to incubate and birth a miracle. I need two things from God, an idea and a picture. So now Abram's got a picture. He can, he can look at the stars of heaven. He can see thousands of stars and, and know he's going to have thousands of kids. We say a picture's worth a thousand words. If you want biblical support, these are the two verses that I think support it. Because when God gave him a picture, the very next verse gives you the result of a picture, heart faith. I know it's heart faith because Abraham's a father of faith and it's heart faith that gets miracles done. So heart faith is faith wrapped up in pictures. Man, I didn't know that for years. I couldn't say that. No one could say that to me. Heart faith is faith that's wrapped in rhema words and pictures, divine pictures from Almighty God. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, so father of many, many nations. How many children does Abram have when God gives him this vision? <laughs> he has zero kids. How old is he? <laughs> He's 75. How many think that could be a small problem? 
you know, I mean, you know, your mind comes along and says, hey, Dumbo, <laughs> you know, that wasn't really God. Well, all right, so now we're going to go through a battle. We're going to go through a battle. All right, because how many in your own life, after you get a rainbow word and a vision from God, have your mind come along with really accusative negative stuff, saying, I don't think so. Let, let's just say Abram believed. For a whole year he believed and said, I'm going to act in faith, see if I can't get my wife pregnant. After a year, is his wife pregnant? No. All right, fine. He said, I'm going to believe for three years. After three years, is his wife pregnant? No. Now talk to me, folks. All right, he says, I'm going to believe for five years. After five years, is his wife pregnant? No. Fine. I'm going to believe for ten years. After ten years of believing and acting in faith, is his wife pregnant? No. Okay, how many are ready to go into hopelessness and despair? Now we had a prophetic word. God wants to restore hope. Well, man, it's a good time to get into hopelessness because I have been believing God for ten years for a miracle, acting in faith. It was birthed in a rhema and a vision, and God didn't do his part. And how many know Satan, the accuser of the brethren, is right there to help you with these mental thoughts? Because Satan is going to say stuff, spontaneous thoughts. Now, Satan's voice comes as spontaneous thoughts that light up on my mind also. Same as the Holy Spirit comes as spontaneous thoughts, but Satan is negative. Satan's an accuser. We have some names of Satan. We could even give you a PowerPoint if we wanted, but uh, his thoughts line up with his names. He's an accuser, he's an adversary, he's a liar, he's a thief, he steals. So let's take some uh, thoughts like in that nature. Here's a thought that's going to come to Abraham. Hey, Abraham, <laughs> that wasn't really God that told you you're going to be the father of many nations. That was just a spirit of pride. You're just a fool. And you know what? Even if God was going to use you, he's not anymore. And here's why. Because you're a sinner. You had your wife sold into a harem. How many think that's fairly bad to have your wife sold into a harem? Yeah, a couple of women do. That's good. <laughs> and Abraham says, yeah, but I repented. Satan said, you didn't repent. If you'd have repented, you wouldn't have done it a second time. Did he do it a second time? How many think to what, sell your wife into two harems is, is kind of bad? And Satan says, you're going to be the father of faith. You don't even have enough faith to believe that God can protect you from the king of the, la king of the land. And because you're afraid, you sell your wife into harems. You're not a man of faith. You're a man of fear. This is your weak suit. How many believe that kind of garbage is going through his mind? I believe it because it goes through my mind. That's what the accuser does. Now, the Holy Spirit, he's got names. He's a comforter. He's a counselor. He's a healer. He's a teacher. He's an edifier. He's a giver of life. So spontaneous thoughts that line up with his names are coming from him. So here's what the Holy Spirit's saying to Abram. He said, it's okay. <laughs> God knows your frame. He knows that you're dust. He made you that way. Your dust fused to glory. The dust part of you is weak. The glory part of you is strong. You can step from one to the other. And when you fail to do it, God's blood cleanses you of your sin, washes you, and you can get back up and do it again. It's okay. It's no problem that you sin. It's not a problem. It's covered by the blood. Let's press on. All right? And God will use you. Just trust him. Just believe. How long should I believe? Just until the miracle happens. Keep believing. Trust me. I say, God, can you give me a date? He said, no. Trust me. I said, God, I want a date. He said, trust me. All right? In my journal, I've asked God for dates, and whenever I finally wrangled one out of him, the date never came to pass anyway, so I... Don't imagine it was God giving me the date, just my own spirit impatiently throwing one in there, all right? God says, just trust me. Don't even figure out when I'm going to come back. He said, you know, I'm going to come back when I'm going to come back. You just don't have to figure the date out. I said, I must know the date. He said, you don't need to know the date. Trust me. Now, if you've journaled and heard God's voice very long at all, you're going to have heard him say, trust me, about a thousand times. <laughs> and I either get to say, yes, Lord, or whine. I think we should practice, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because God doesn't like whining any more than you and I like whining, all right? And he's asking me, he's just saying, Mark, say yes, Lord, and then go ahead and do it, please, all right? All right, so um, the third sense of his spirit. Now we're getting to the third sense of his spirit, his inner mind where he ponders. Is Abram going to ponder demonic negatives or Holy Ghost positives? Turn, if you will, in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 4, and we're going to see who fills the third sense of Abram, Romans, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, who fills the third sense of his spirit? Does Satan with demonic negatives or does the Holy Spirit with Holy Ghost positives? 
Romans chapter 4, verse 20, Yet with respect to the promise of God, Abram does not waver in unbelief. Would you say, does not waver in unbelief? But grew strong in faith. Would you say that? But grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully assured that what God had promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was credited to him as righteousness. All right, who fills the third sense of Abram's spirit, his inner mind? Is he going to ponder demonic negatives or Holy Ghost positives? Tell me. Holy Ghost positives. We now have three senses of Abram's spirit filled. Now the fourth sense, where he purposes in his spirit and he speaks it forth. Watch God fill the fourth sense. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, back to Genesis. We're going to end up in Genesis. Genesis chapter... 17 verse 5 Genesis chapter 17 verse 5 we'll watch God fill the fourth sense of his spirit Genesis chapter 17 verse 5 no longer shall your name be called Abram but your name shall be what Abraham for I will make you the father of many nations do you know what the word Abraham means if you do shout it out father of many nations <laughs> Okay, now Abram is now, Abraham is now 99 years of age. He has no children by his wife. <laughs> and God just changed his name. So now when a newcomer shows up in town and Abram says, Hello, my name is Abraham. What's he really saying? Hello, I'm the father of many nations. And he's 99 years of age with no kids. <laughs> I said, God, this is not a good plan. I said, God, you get my wife pregnant first or get me a child or two and then I'll say, hello, I'm the father of many nations. God said, no, you say it first. I'll get her, I'll get her pregnant second. I said, no, that's not a good plan because it takes you forever to start things. So how about if you get her pregnant first or let me get her pregnant, all right, and then uh, I'll go ahead and confess it. And God says, no, you need to say it first. I said, I don't understand. He said, I spoke the worlds into being. Speech is part of creation, and if you're not willing to speak it before it happens, you can't birth it. God spoke the worlds into being. He created because he said it. The energy of his spirit was released through his breath, and he created what his breath said to create. And I said, God, help me understand you. He said, okay. He says, it's like when you worked on a construction crew, and you built uh, two-by-four forms, and you poured concrete into it. He said, that's the way speech is, because the word... The word for breath and spirit is the same word. And so when you want to release spirit energy, it can come out through your breath. And so he says, here's, he said, the form is what your words say. So he said to Abraham, say this, I am Abraham, the father of many nations. And all that energy in your spirit will pour forth and create what you have spoken, what I have told you to speak. Now that's a big, a big difference. Do I pick the words to speak or does he give me the words to speak he gives me the words to speak I don't just speak anything he tells me what to say and when to say because he didn't ask Abram to change his name 24 years ago he waited 24 years so I don't just say anything I want I don't just create anything I want I let God tell me what to say how to say it when to say it and then I create at that point in time and that's a nice distinction to hang on to all right because um why does God wait 24 years? For me, he waited five years. He said, Mark, here's what we're going to do through you. We're going to saturate the world with the message of communion of God. Whoa, that's a lot bigger than Mark Rickler planned on doing. That's a hundred or thousand times bigger than I planned. He's, and he didn't ask me to speak that for the first five years. And here's why. Because when you speak things that have not yet happened, the cynics are going to smirk and laugh. Some right in your face and say, you know what? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> And I really hate to be laughed at. And so if I get about three or four people laughing at me and mocking me out, I'm going to say, God, I can't handle the pressure. I'm not going to say we're going to saturate the world with the message of communion with God. I'm not going to say I am Abraham. I can't handle the pressure. I'm just going to have an abortion, if you don't mind, and abort this baby. And that's why God doesn't ask us to say it right up front. Right up front, he says, okay, take the first few years and here's what I want you to do. I want you to ponder it. I want you to ponder it. I want you to ponder it. I want you to see it, ponder it, see it, ponder it, see it, ponder it. And the longer you see it, the energy grows within your spirit. And you become more filled with divine energy until it's ready to pour forth. 
And when it's ready to pour forth, he said, then I'm going to tell you how to let it pour forth. Say this, I am Abraham. And he said, I'll tell you how to say it, and you'll create what I tell you to say. Speak things into existence. From my throat, he said, Mark, say this. Say that your, my throat is healed. Jesus has a throat problem because he took my infirmity on the cross. Mark Berkeley doesn't have it. Jesus has a throat problem. I have a healed throat. Say it. I said it. I said it for several months until my throat was healed. And my throat is healed. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand. That'd be fine. Amen. Amen. These are the principles of faith. They're pretty simple, and if we can grab a hold of them and do them, we can birth supernatural miracles. We can have heart faith that births miracles out through our, our spiritual loins. All right? All right, so now we've got the fourth sense of his spirit filled. He is speaking in faith. Now the final sense, fifth sense, which, where he feels emotionally involved enough to act with instant obedience. Let's watch him do that. Turn, if you will, in your Bibles. So Genesis chapter 17, we'll stop at verse 10. Genesis chapter 17, verse 10, God says, This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Huh, new rhema word. Never mentioned circumcision before in the last 24 years. You know, and that's a principle, that as you do your faith walk and you say, Good morning, Lord, what am I supposed to do today? He'll give you some added instruction. This was added instruction, and if you notice what he does in verse, in verse uh, 19, verse uh, 23, excuse me. At the end of verse 23, it says, On the very same day that God had spoke to him, he had his family circumcised. Would you please say, very same day? Would you say, instant obedience? Instant <laughs> All right, he came to a point where he would act in instant obedience on the rhema word of God, and he wasn't always at that point because when he began his faith walk, he was where I was when I began my faith walk. I was only half obedient. God said to Abram, he said, leave her a Chaldees, leave your family and leave your relatives and go uh, and come on over to, to Canaan. Did he leave his relatives or did he bring his relatives with him? He brought them with him. That's called partial obedience. Would you say partial obedience? And you know what? As far as I can figure, that's okay. I think when we begin our faith walk, we begin where we're at, and God takes us to where he wants us to go, which is total instant obedience. But we don't start there because we're just growing in faith. Abram grew strong in faith. He wasn't always strong in faith. He grew strong. I grew strong in faith. When God told me things in my first year of journaling and hearing his voice, I obeyed about half of them because that's all I could bring myself to obey. The rest I couldn't even believe. Now I can believe essentially all of them because I've lived with the voice of God and journaling and hearing God's voice for 30 years. And I now believe that God can do the supernatural through me and through you and through anyone who will cooperate and say, yes, Lord, and not whine. <laughs> Let's practice, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Because yet, yes, Lord gets you a miracle. Whining gets you killed, all right? Because uh, those in the wilderness who whined, he just killed them, all right? 14,700 killed in one day just simply for grumbling, all right? All right, so uh, he acts in obedience, all right? And now what happens? Turn, if you will, in your Bibles to Genesis 21. Genesis 21, verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord took note of Sarah, as he'd said. The Lord did for Sarah as he had promised, and Sarah conceived. Would you please say that? Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abram in his old age at the appointed time which God had spoken to him. And verse 5, Abram he is how old? <laughs> how old? Do you know how old he was when this happened? 100. <laughs> that means it only took 25 years to get the miracle started. <laughs> now, I've explained to God that that's way too long. I said, God, we don't, I, don't, I don't want a miracle to begin in 25 years. I would like it to begin in 25 minutes or less, and I would like it to be over within 25 hours. He said, Mark, I write the rules. In the fullness of time, I'll make it happen. And you say, yes, Lord, or else you whine. And if you whine, then you have to suffer a consequence. So I've been practicing, yes, Lord. I think we should practice it one more time. Yes, Lord. Because you just get further down the road of life if you can say, yes, Lord, rather than whining. All right? 
100 years of age. 100 years of age before the first child is born to him. And you know what? He died in faith because he never saw the fulfillment of the promise. He said, your earth will be blessed through my... He said, the earth will be blessed through your seed. Would you tell me when in history the earth was blessed through the seed of Abraham? At what point in history did that happen? When Jesus Christ was resurrected from the grave and salvation was spread out to the entire world, that's when it happened. Amen? Was that during his lifetime? That was 1,500 years after he died. <laughs> I said, God, I don't want stuff to happen 1,500 years after I die. He said, who writes the rules? I said, well, you do. He said, yes, I do. Say, yes, Lord. Come on, practice again. Yes, Lord. You know, he said, Mark, I just want you to die in faith speaking what I've told you to speak. Whether it happens in your lifetime or your children's lifetime or your grandchildren, it doesn't make any difference to me. I just want you to die in faith. I, think, I said, I think I got it. I think I got it. So I've decided, fine, I'm willing to die in faith. Because the Israelites weren't willing to die in faith. They were in the wilderness flunking test after test. God says, I gave you ten tests. You flunked them all. Here's one of the tests. He said, they went three days with no water. How many know three days with no water in the wilderness? You're about ready to die. Right? And you know what they said? <laughs> We're going to die. <laughs> and you know what God said? You just flunked the test. I said, fine. Well, then what would they have had to say to have passed the test? Do you know what they would have had to say to pass that test? Shout it out if you know. God is my provider. I trust in God. At the point of extinction, for them to pass the test, they had to say, I trust in God. And God said, Mark, that's what you have to do. When the pressure's on and you feel like whining and giving up and saying, blah, 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 he said, you need to say, I trust in God. Because I used to flunk a lot of tests. When the pressure was on, I'd start whining too. And God said, stop. He said, you're flunking test. You're not getting to the promised land because when I put the pressure on to s and squeeze you a little bit to see what's in your heart, what pops out of your mouth is what's in your heart. And what was in their heart is doubt and unbelief. They said, I don't believe God can take care of me. I believe I'm going to die. I believe I'm going to die. I see myself dying. I'm speaking I'm going to die. And guess what God said? You filled all five senses of your spirit with negative faith. And you're going to get exactly what you're believing for, exactly what you're speaking, exactly what you're confessing. You're going to get it. You're going to die in the wilderness. It wasn't my plan. But faith works whether you work in reverse or in forward gear. According to your faith, be it what? Unto you. So they flunked the test because they were believing for destruction. And I've decided to give that up for Lent. I'm not going to believe for destruction. I'm going to believe God is my healer. Fine. Last year I said, God, should I, should I quit? doing public speaking. I mean, when you go for month after month and lose your voice in every seminar, I'm saying, is it time for me to quit talking? He said, no. I said, I'm thinking of retiring. He said, don't. He said, I, I, he said I've healed you. I said, it's easier, easier for you to say, but I, my throat's not working. He said, your throat's working. Say, my throat works. I am healed. Say, I am healed. I am healed. You gotta say something. You can speak life over yourself or you can speak death over yourself and God taught me to speak life over myself and not death over myself. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful miracle for me. And so i become a man of faith, a mighty man of faith. I used to be a mighty man of fear. And I hated myself for that. And now I'm a mighty man of faith because I understand how to develop heart faith, which is what this message is, developing heart faith. Or you can call it the dream maker or the divine dream maker. God is a divine dream maker. He gives you dreams and he makes them come to pass if you say yes, sir, and you speak and see positive and not negative. One of the things he said to me in my journaling, he said, Mark, he said, whatever you fix your eyes on grows within you and whatever grows within you, you become. So fine, I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus and his promises to me and his provision for me and the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon me. I'm going to see that. I'm not going to look at my weakness. I'm not going to look at my sin, sinfulness. I'm not going to look at anything about me because God never said gaze on your weakness or gaze on your sinfulness. He said gaze on me. Fix your eyes on Jesus. It took me years to even embrace that simple truth. I memorized the verse. I didn't do it. How many of you know it's the verses you do that make a difference in your life? Amen? Amen. Not just the verses you memorize, the verses you do. So, in your life, what are some of the promises God's given to you? What are some of the dreams he's given to you? 
Maybe you were a child, maybe you were a kid, a teenager, and God spoke a dream into your life as to what he wanted you to do with your life. Maybe somebody talked you out of it. I had people try to talk me out of some of my dreams because they weren't sure I could make a living on them. <laughs> and they said, you should plan for a second course of action in case the first one fails. Well, all right. So here's some questions to take home and journal about and pray about over the next few days, over the next week or two. Lord, what are the dreams that you've spoken to me? What are the visions that you've given to me? Visions for your life? Visions for your health? Visions for your marriage? Visions for your finance? Because there's no such thing as you not having a vision for your finance. You do. You either are picturing the fact that you don't hardly have enough or that you're going bankrupt or that you have more than enough or that you have enough to lend and not borrow. You're picturing one of those things, and the picture that God said you should be picturing is that we lend and don't borrow. Concerning your marriage, there's no possibility you don't have an idea. Well, if you're not married, you may not have an idea, but if you're married, you've got a picture and an idea about your marriage. It's either we're just hanging on, or we have a good marriage, or we have an outstanding marriage. But you do have a picture concerning your marriage. Concerning your health, you have a picture of what your health is going to be like today and in old age. I'm going to go into old age and, and I'm going to probably get sick and die or I'm going to go into old age in vibrant health and I'm not going to blow a gasket but I'm going to be in vibrant health till the day that God takes me home. you got a picture and you have an idea which you are pondering, speaking and acting and creating. So I'm asking you, will you check all these pictures and make sure they're clean and make sure they came from God and are confirmed by the word of God and did not come from self or Satan. I have pictures of promised land within me Promised land ministry means I get to touch hundreds, thousands, and millions of people and bless them. Picture of my finance, I get to lend and not borrow. That's promised land for me. Picture of my health, I get to go into old age and vibrant health. Picture of my marriage, we have a great marriage. It's fulfilling to my wife and I. Picture of our children, our children grow strong in the Lord and become mighty instruments of God. I have pictures for each one that I'm pondering. They're divine pictures given by God, confirmed by the Word of God. God, I believe something about my kids. I'm sure not going to picture rebellion, though I'm not going to picture the terrible twos. I'm not going to say the terrible twos. I'm not going to picture teenage rebellion. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to believe for it. I'm going to believe for what God says to believe for. One day I was picturing division between me and one of my children, foster, like a foster child, a girl who had ran away from her home and came to our home. She was breaking all the household rules, and I was picturing, I'm going to sit her down, we're going to talk. And, uh, and I was picturing her on one side of the argument and me on the other. And as God spoke in my journal, he said, Mark, don't ever picture division between you and your child. She's flesh of your flesh. She's bone of your bone. She's one with you. And this is a foster child. He still said, flesh of your flesh, bone of your bone. She's one with you. Don't ever picture division. Because if I sit there and talk to her for 30 minutes and I'm picturing her on one side and me on the other, what am I going to create? I'm going to create division because I'm picturing division. He said, don't ever picture division. How many think that one-liner helps a lot? Because, I mean, I'm, what am I picturing when I look at you? Are you on the same side with me or are you on the other side of me? Am I pounding on you or am I loving and lifting you? Some preachers preach pounding on people. Some, people come along as a, some preachers come along as a coach and they lift. What picture do we have? What picture do you have of every single person you relate to? I mean, that one-liner from God cleaned up, helped me so much with my interpersonal relationships. He's made me aware of pictures. He's, I'm 100% aware of the pictures I hold and the ideas that are rummaging around inside my mind. And I'm only pondering, speaking, and acting pictures and words that came from Almighty God. If you're willing to do that, I'd like you to say amen. 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 So I'm done with the teaching time. If we have questions, we can take questions, or we can do prayer, we can do whatever. But I believe we're pretty well done. I would like you to, over the next week or two in your life, I would like you to journal and ask God, Lord, what are the dreams and visions you've given to me? And then ask a few other questions. Lord, am I pondering those visions? Am I speaking them forth? Am I acting them out? Am I in obedience? As you've asked me to be in obedience, uh, in the ways that you want me to be in obedience. Um, so those are qu uh, questions that you can ask. Now, there, you know, there is one more little thing that I probably should mention, all right? Well, let me just mention it now. While we're waiting for God to fulfill a vision, we might try to cook it up on ourselves. 
Abraham did that with, uh, with his wife. Uh, they had a committee meeting, and his wife said, how about if you go into my handmaid and you can have a child through her? <laughs> and the Bible says, Abram, listen to the voice of Sarai. <laughs> okay, question. Is it okay to listen to the voice of your wife? This is a loaded question. If you answer it wrong, you don't eat for several days if you're married, all right? So is it okay to listen to the voice of your wife? Yes, if she's listening to the voice of God. Is it okay to listen to your own voice? Yes, if you're listening to the voice of God. If you're not, skip it. You have nothing to say. Okay, so she said, come on, let's see if we can have a child through my handmaiden. Did they get a child through her handmaiden? Was it a male child? Did he grow up? Was he able to bear a seed line? Yeah, and so when he's uh, ready to bear a seed line, Abram is showing him off to God and says, God, let Ishmael live before thee. And God said, no. I'm going to give you Isaac as a son. And he refused to accept what they came up with through a committee meeting. I said, God, I don't understand. You know, you, you gave me the vision. We've worked hard. We put our heads together. We gave it everything we had. You know, it wasn't that bad of an idea. We got a child here. You're not going to use him? He said, no. He said, I said, why not? He said, I didn't want you doing stuff on your own. I wanted you to be a vine, a branch grafted into a vine. I wanted you to abide in Christ. I wanted you to hear my rhema word and live it out and not live on your own, separate from me. And that idea was separate from me. It didn't come from revelation knowledge. It came from your own heads. And I said, well, you know what? My head's not all that bad. It's a pretty good idea. You know what? We still have a war going because of that, that idea. The sons of Ishmael, all right, and sons of Isaac, are st- it's the Arabs, the Israelites, still at war 3,000 years later. Huh. <laughs> Maybe my ideas aren't just neutral. Maybe my ideas can start a 3,000-year-old war. And that's why I've decided I don't want to live out of Mark Berkeley's best thoughts. I want to hear the voice of God and live out of that. So I'm going to ask you, don't create Ishmael's. While you're waiting for God, don't cook things up with your own brilliance. Just, just listen to what he has to say. I remember during the first year that I, uh, after God said, Mark, we're going to saturate the world with the message of communion with God, I said, okay, God, I'm ready. What do you want me to do? He said, I'd like you to love your wife. I said, well, I figured that out already, you know. But, I mean, as far as saturating the world, what do you want me to do? He said, well, I'd like you to love your wife. I said, I got that. But what do you want me to do to saturate the world? He said, I want you to love your wife. Now, the whole first year, all he did was tell me to love my wife. How many think a really nice, firm marriage would be a nice foundation for changing the world? Yeah. And he just wanted to make sure the first year that I got the foundation laid nice and square so I, I didn't blow it up. All right, and so as you're walking along through the years, God's going to be giving you specific things he wants you to do in the order he wants you to do them in so that you can be prepared to fulfill the supernatural work that he asks you to fulfill. <clears throat> All right, I believe I'm going to turn Hi. this over. <clears throat> well, um, I w- would you mind praying for us all, Mark? Yeah, Cause, oh, I sure would. I don't know, I, I've, I've already been planning to go home and listen to this again, so I'm just <laughs> like, oh, I need to get this inside. So. Yeah. Why don't we just stand up? Because I don't know if if anyone's like, yes, I want to grab hold of this. We'd love you to pray for us, Mark, and for those who are watching online. All right. Well, let's just pray a prayer of affirmation and impartation. And since uh, we've talked about you speaking life over yourself, I'm going to invite you to speak life over yourself and, uh, and just speak some things together with me. Let's say this. Dear Lord Jesus, I choose to be a child of faith. I choose to let you fill all five senses. I choose to do only what I hear you speaking and only what I see you doing. Teach me to hear your voice and to see vision. Make it normal and natural and comfortable and the way that I live. And Lord, I will ponder what you show me. I will speak it. I will act it in simple childlike faith. And I will stand in faith as long as it takes. And if I have to die in faith, I will die in faith and allow you to put me in Hebrews 11 As a hero in faith, I choose to be a hero in faith. I choose to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear you. 
I'll obey you. I will live out of you. You will be my life. You are my all in all. I'm a vessel. I contain you. Holy Spirit, come alive within me. Give me spontaneous thoughts and pictures. I choose to live out of them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for your grace upon my life. You make me more than I ever dreamed I could be. And I give you all praise, honor, and glory for what you do through me. Because it begins with you and it ends with you. Thank you, Lord. Now I want to pray a prayer of impartation. Just uh, open your heart, maybe lift your hands if you want to, whatever is comfortable, just to receive. Father, I pray for an impartation of faith across this congregation, this group of people who are listening to this teaching. Father, I release faith into their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. The faith that you have given to me, I release it to them right now in the name of Jesus. I speak faith into your heart. Faith, arise. Speak it with me. Faith, arise. Faith, arise. Faith, arise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Faith, arise in Jesus' name. I call for faith to arise within me. Go ahead and say it. I call for faith to arise within me. Faith, arise within me. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for release of faith into their hearts right now. Just go ahead and lay your hands on your heart. And just see them as the hands of Jesus and see faith pouring through those hands, light pouring through those hands into your heart, filling you up with faith, hope, light, and love. So I speak to these hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Be filled. Be filled with faith. Be filled with faith right now. The hands of Jesus are being laid upon these hearts right now. And I speak the words of Jesus. Come alive in faith. Come alive in faith. Come alive in faith in Jesus' name. Father, let your light flood the dark areas of these hearts, driving out all darkness, driving out all darkness and filling them with light and faith and hope and love and joy and peace. Father, I pray for an impartation of vision upon the people who are listening. Father, I pray for the eyes of their heart to be enlightened that they might see. Lord, any anointing you've given for me to see in the spirit, I release that anointing right now to these people. I release it, I release it, I release it, and I say, see in the Spirit. See in the Spirit. See in the Spirit. And I'd like you to say, eyes see. Eyes see. Eyes see. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I command these blind eyes to see. In the name of Jesus. I command the scales to fall from these eyes. I command the blindness to leave these eyes. In Jesus' name. And I speak sight to these eyes. In the name of Jesus, see into the spirit realm. And believe that what you see is coming from God. Faith arise. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I, I pray for an impartation of the ability to hear your voice upon this congregation and the people who are listening. Father, for the anointing you've given to me to hear, I release it right now into the atmosphere that you may hear. You may hear the voice of God. You may hear the voice of God. You may hear. Just lay your, your hands upon your ears. See them as the hands of Jesus. And just speak to your ears and say, ears hear in the name of Jesus. Here in the name of Jesus. Here in the name of Jesus. Hear his voice. Hear his voice. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say this I can hear because I'm a sheep. And Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. Therefore, I hear his voice. I'm his sheep. It's his promise to me. I can hear. It's easy. It's effortless. 
It's childlike. And I will become childlike. And I will believe that the spontaneous thoughts that light upon my mind are coming from Jesus. Because he's a river within, he's a flow within. And when I tune to that flow, I'm tuning to Jesus. I'm tuning to the river of God. I'm tuning to the Spirit of God. And I'm becoming anointed. And I choose the anointing over self in action. I choose Jesus in action over me in action. And I thank you, Jesus, for your anointing that rests upon me. I thank you that it's easy, it's effortless, it's childlike. I don't have to make it happen. It simply happens. It's grace. It's you giving it freely to me. And I say, yes, Lord. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. Oh, I could so feel the presence of God when we were just praying there. I'm like, oh. Well, this is about all we have time for tonight. Um, For those of you who are watching online and were kind of grabbed hold of by the teaching tonight, um, the the link for Mark's uh, website was on the bottom. It's uh, cwgministries.org. That's correct. Uh Um, So please uh, do go online there. Uh, Mark has a wealth of materials on so many different subjects um, that are just very revelatory, and he's an incredible teacher. So please do uh, check out that website, and if you're kind of hungry for some more materials, Material, that is the place to go. Um, for those of you watching, um, thank you so much. If you've not had an opportunity for someone to pray for you, um, there is the uh, CBN prayer line number coming up at the bottom of your screen, and there are some wonderful, um, spirit-filled believers um, on the other end of the phone line, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, waiting to pray for you. I have met some of them, and they are very lovely. So uh, the number is 1-800-759-0700. So if no one's managed to pray for you, tonight please call them Um, there's someone waiting to talk to you and uh, for those visitors who came tonight thank you so much Um, it's our time to sign off now but we'll see you next week uh, seven o'clock here on Thursday night good night